Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Philip McMillan, and I'm here to share with you some insights about the ongoing probing of what's happening with regards to COVID. Now, there are some people who don't think COVID is particularly serious. I understand where you're coming from. You know, from a clinical point of view, I can tell you from real world experience, this is a beast of a virus. What's happening is that it seems as though it's silent. And I'm telling you this because over and over again, as I interact with patients, I have to dig to find out if they have had some kind of viral exposure. So what I'm going to be sharing with you very quickly is the recent national flu COVID-19 surveillance report. This is from the UK. And I think it has some important data in it that uh, needs to be reviewed. Um, additionally, I want to make sure that by the end of this short sequence, you take it seriously to try and get Humming Heroes. This is probably one of the most important pieces of information with regards to what's happening in terms of simple strategies you can use. It's put in a story format simply because on balance, many people don't want to get too much in the science. So we've put the science in a story format where you can get the principles about nitric oxide protecting your sinuses. Really important stuff. So let's get back to the recent update. Now, I think that what is happening in the UK is the same trend that is going to be happening. Transition seems to be pointing to an early flu season. This is what happened in Japan, then in the Philippines, then Singapore. Then I think it was, was it Malaysia that I did? You could see from the east coming across, it's like a wave of viral infection. Now, I'm going to show you some charts here, and I'm going to add my insights to it. This is just my analysis of what's going on. So let's get straight into it. As I said, this was updated on the 6th of November, 2025. So it's a more recent ups update. Um, they've highlighted that influenza activity is at a low level, but it's increasing. This is an unusually early start for the influenza season. Now, what I find very interesting is COVID-19 activity is decreasing and circulating at baseline levels. This is always a red flag to me because if there is one thing we know, COVID is the beast in this picture. Now, flu is no joke either. And this is why um, for people who are high risk, I still maintain that if you are high risk, immune suppressed, older age group, you probably may benefit from the influenza vaccine this year. And I'm not saying that because I'm promoting them. I am just very concerned at a population level that there doesn't seem to be any great backup for the population immune suppression that occurred with COVID. Anything that could mitigate what I think is going to happen next is worthwhile. This is not a time to get into silos or to be worried about narratives. Believe me, this is important. So when we look at the chart, the first thing that I've noticed here is that when they look at the COVID-19 episodes tested in hospital settings, there was a peak at around October and then a rapid drop off going into November. There was definitely a peak. Um, the question is, what is happening beyond this peak? So now this is where you have to think carefully. COVID, in a sense, similar to measles. Measles wipes out immune memory. COVID also wipes out a number of immune um, cells, the T cells, the natural killer cells, regulatory cells. It literally weakens the immune system. And if you have a more chronic infection, it will suppress the interferon response. So this is where once you have the surge of COVID, I'm not surprised with what happens next. Here you have the influenza, and they're showing you the years from 2022, 2023, 
2024. So there was this peak in 2022 and 2023 to 2024, 2025. So it was, okay, look at that. 2022 peak, 2023 prof. 2024 peak, what you would then expect probably is another trough where it comes down. But look at what is happening here. Now, you will notice that this was running at the baseline and then suddenly starts to rise here. Now, I'll take you back again to what I showed you before. And this is where I'm telling you that the two things tend to correlate. Actually, I have another chart that may better demonstrate what I'm talking about. Here we have, in this chart, this dark red line is COVID. And you can see that the COVID levels were rising, 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 and then they hit about October here, and they suddenly drop off. And these are positive tests. One of the most interesting things I am noticing clinically is that patients literally have to be dug to find symptoms of COVID. It's not like what it was before, where you have obvious headaches, they have maybe some people have a stuffy nose, may have a sore throat, they feel quite achy, they feel ill. And that's how more recently people have been presenting with COVID. It almost, it almost presented more like an influenza kind of picture. When you're sick with influenza, you tend to know. Now, what I'm noticing is that the COVID symptoms are so subtle literally mild headache, what people feel afterwards is just fatigue that can go on for sometimes a couple of weeks and they just feel out of it. They just don't feel right and they could have a whole bunch of other random symptoms. But it doesn't fit typically and if they don't know to look out for that, they will not even realize this was probably COVID. So what I think is happening, and again, this is my opinion, is that we are seeing a fall off in terms of positive tests because so much of the population is immune suppressed after the surge. And therefore they are not responding normally to even a COVID infection. Then that rolls right into an early influenza surge. Now, here is how I explain that this is happening. Two things are happening at once. One, there was a surge in the east, in Japan, as I said, in Singapore. It's coming across. Delhi also had it. So that's the first thing. But it's not a new strain. It's still the influenza A. When you looked at the WHO dashboard, they were saying that it's not a new strain. It is still the same influenza A. So if it's the same influenza A virus that they had seen before, you wouldn't expect it to be doing too much damage unless the population's immunity is suppressed. So what I think is happening is firstly, you have the surge of COVID. Once you have suppression of interferon, and so my instinct now is that a lot of people have persistent COVID infection in the sinuses. It will not present with any great symptoms. And sometimes you will only know this if they had a scan of their head and you can see sinus inflammation. So if you have chronic COVID persistence, it will suppress the interferon response. Now, if you don't know, interferon is like the signal. It's like the alarm system. So when your body is infected by a virus, any virus and some bacteria, it switches on the lights. You can see the flashing lights to tell the whole body that there is virus here. And so therefore all the cells get into a position where they can try and mitigate against infection. They shut down their protein making facilities and they protect themselves against infection. Part of the reason why COVID caused so much problems was because it was so good at suppressing that alarm, the interferon system. So it would infect and there would be no signal and therefore no symptoms. So no symptoms doesn't mean mild. No symptoms probably means immune suppression. Let me repeat that. 
a lot of people perceive that mild symptoms around COVID means that it is irrelevant. No, you probably may be better off having the chills and the sore throat because it means your interferon has kicked in. And even though you will feel unwell, it will be able to stop the circulation of the virus. If you have no symptoms or limited symptoms, it suggests that your alarms have been switched off. And therefore, not only are you at risk for COVID, you be at risk for other viral infections. See here again, influenza rising. And if you look carefully, when you look at, uh, at this here, rhinovirus went up at the same time as the COVID peaked and seemed to be coming down. There we have influenza rising, RSV rising. I suspect that rhinovirus is not causing as many symptoms because the immune system is suppressed. And so it's not that it's falling, it's that fewer people are reporting symptoms and then getting tested. My suspicion is that everything is on the rise. That's the perfect storm. And that's the bit that I've been worried about. And this is part of the reason tying it back to GERT is that I think that it is the combination of the immune suppression, new strains of COVID, interferon suppression, co-infections, multiple viruses infecting at the same time. This is potentially where we are going. And so just as a final reminder, take a look and see, this is going to be happening, I think, across the whole of the Western world and early, and I expect a big spike of influenza. And that's because it's riding on the back of COVID. That's my prediction. Remember, that's not, uh, the epidemiologist will not agree with me because everybody wants to ignore COVID at the moment. But my prediction is that that surge of COVID before has suppressed the population immunity. It's opening the doors for other viruses. And then everybody becomes at higher risk for influenza, RSV, because not only will people have these infections, but they themselves will not have a normal response to influenza either. And they're more, therefore, they may spend more time spreading it around. This is probably going to be a tough winter, which then brings me back to the end of don't forget why this was written. Humming Heroes was done because so few people under, understood the science around nitric oxide. The principles are simple. Your sinuses seems to be where the Omicron virus seems to be able to hide. However, nitric oxide, which is produced in higher quantities when you hum, is antiviral, antibacterial, and anti-inflammatory. One of the simplest strategies that anyone can do to try and protect themselves through what could be a torrid viral winter. Let's hope that I'm wrong, but so far all the indications seem to be pointing to the fact this could be a problem winter ahead. Remember, take a look in the description, like, comment, and subscribe. Have a great evening. A hero, an immune adventure, Humming Heroes, your lyrical guide to the body's defenders. Now on Amazon, check the links below.